Thank you very much, uh, Cisco. Bill, I'd like to uh, thank the, off the organizers for uh, inviting me to speak here today, and I promised Bill that I would do this in under, under 10 minutes. I'm gratified to see that the, the automatic 20,000 volt shock for those who go over has been dis disactivated. Thank you for that. But what I want to talk today about is a step further from what we've heard with the science, more the, uh, the moral and ethical pressure that that's building on us to, do, to take a look at this and see what it can mean for the system of radiological protection. In order to, to do that, the, the, radiation, the Committee on Radiation Protection and Public Health has for many years been working on uh, stakeholder involvement issues. And the la latest, met, met, uh, latest manifestation of that is our program on science and values, where we try and look at the science behind decisions and the values that push decisions. And what we've, just, what we've kind of noted is that all complex radiological protection situations involve, involve some sort of a decision to be made. And there's science that is the basis for, of the decision. That the decision is informed by science. But the, the science rarely makes the decision. The decision is almost generally uh, pushed and managed by values and, and other social and political aspects that drive the decision. And so in that context, uh, we want to learn more about the transparency and the aspects of the science and the values that inform decisions, that make decisions, that drive decisions. And so we've held three workshops so far uh, in 2008, 2009, and 2012, the last being in Tokyo, to look at the science and values of decision making. And in each of these, we have plenary sessions where we discuss the topics that we want to have and then detailed, I don't want to say dialogues, but uh, stakeholder discussions on what the aspects of these are. And <clears throat> in all of these, we've had a common topic. And because we're radiation protection experts, we can't use the same name for the common topic each time. So the first meeting we had circulatory disease, the second meeting we called it radiation-induced vascular effects, and now we call it non-cancer effects. I'm going to go ahead with uh, circulatory disease because CD is a great acronym and we love acronyms too. So we've discussed that in all three of our meetings and that's what I want to bring you <clears throat> some of our results on that today. So why do we care about this problem? Well, the existence of, the clear existence of epidemiological evidence shows that above about half a gray, uh, there can be radiation-induced cardiovascular disease. Uh, and even at lower doses, there's some evidence. And it's not clear whether or not this is uh, deterministic or stochastic. It's not clear whether uh, it needs to be acute or it can be, it can be a prolonged exposure over a lifetime. So the, the aspects of these, the risk existing for many different sorts of circumstances is, is certainly there. Uh, the radiation-induced uh, cardiovascular disease can have a significant uh, impact on mortality and morbidity, and it's currently not addressed in the system of radiological protection. And so a change, uh, if we use the, the Japanese uh, lifespan study data uh, and LNT assumption, it would increase the, the detriment by between 20 and 50 percent, which would be rather significant in terms of uh, protection decisions. So that's why we care about this. And we have a moral challenge. Uh, looking at, at where we stood in, in the early 1960s with respect to cancer, in ICRP 9, uh, the, CRP, the ICRP indicated that the mechanisms for the induction of radiation-induced leukemia and other, other diseases were not known. But there was evidence that uh, there was a risk. And so the commission is aware that assumptions uh, of no threshold and, and uh, complete activity of all doses may be incorrect, but is satisfied that they are unlikely to lead to an, uh, an underestimation of risk. So where do we stand now with respect to understanding of, of non-cancer diseases and where we compared to where we stood in 1966 and what are the, the, the implications of, of what, what would be done. So what are we doing in order to try and address this? Well, obviously, everybody is just before me has talked about the science. We're doing our best to try and reinforce the, uh, the scientific studies so that better information and better understanding of what's happening can be the basis of where we move, wherever that may be. Uh, there's increased professional awareness of the issue. We just heard from Alicio that uh, the medical community, which is dealing out a lot of this dose, uh, is becoming more aware of what's going on. We're critically reviewing existing studies. The UNSCEAR uh, work is ongoing in this regard. Uh, challenging features of the current RP system in the light of the evolved ev evidence, so there's work uh, that is being undertaken to look at these things. Strengthen we're trying to strengthen evidence of, uh, from databases and from epidemiology studies to look at the mechanisms of, uh, 
uh, cardiovascular disease. And we're trying to understand, beginning anyway, the policy implications of uh, radiation-induced cardiovascular disease and the need to give much more serious uh, regulatory consideration to that. We saw uh, Miroslav just gave us a discussion of what happened when the ICRP changed the lens of the eye dose. What would happen if that were to, if that were to be implied or implemented for cardiovascular disease? So this raises a lot of value questions uh, regarding the RP system. How much additional risk is suggested by the new studies? Uh, what's the implication of the additional detriment due to these effects? Is the evidence sufficient to require precaution, a precautionary approach? Jacques talked about precaution as a, a key aspect of optimization in the new system. What does this mean under these circumstances? Here's a very concrete example. Uh, there's an important, the, the importance of consistency in approach, given that the precedent, uh, the precedent of cancer risk regulation and how we've done that since the learning more and more, and, and I, I must say, our knowledge of what's going on with, uh, uh, with cancer has been uh, well discussed by Committee One and continues, continues to be fleshed out so we know more and more about the science, even though there are many understand, misunderstandings and, and uncertainties, we're moving things forward there and we're doing the same thing here. Uh, how should this risk be taken into account in the overall risk management approach? And at what level is that risk sufficient to warrant changes in the current protection paradigm for workers and for the general public? These are not obvious questions, and I don't have any, I don't have any solutions or any suggestions to go either way, but I think the questions are clearly on the table for the ICRP. And so the Science and Values uh, Workshop in Tokyo came up with these recommendations. In order to ensure that our ethical values fully apply, and we have, uh, we have to clarify issues of the detriment due to deterministic effects. This must be achieved in close cooperation with the experts from the radiation protection community uh, and from all fields, because this is clearly multi-dimensional. Uh, multi and so the ICRP has recommended to, to create a task group to look at this detriment associated with determin deterministic effects. And uh, the, because the time is approaching that a, a review of this issue uh, should be on the table. Uh, Synthesis of the available knowledge, in particular radio, uh, radiological inputs, is needed, and more assistance from UNSCEAR would be helpful in this regard. Uh, the need to maintain research efforts so as to provide more uh, reliable answers uh, to decrease, in essence, to decrease uncertainties and to make the science better, to improve the understanding of the mechanisms and to improve epidemiology as best we can do that. And finally, efforts are still needed to find more ways to s spread the news, the, the message uh, of the ICRP recommendations in the context of the uh, wider range of safety issues in the light of what we understand today. Thank you very much.